I know a lot of you might be aware of all the drama that's going on in the Magic the Gathering community in regards to Jeremy of Unsleeved Media being accused of harassment by Magic the Gathering cosplayer Christine Spankle. Christine Spankle announced that she was quitting the Magic the Gathering cosplay community due to what she claimed to be two years of harassment from Jeremy of Unsleeved Media. This lit a bit of a dumpster fire in the community and it started a little bit of a Me Too campaign with other people coming forward with further allegations of apparent harassment from Jeremy. Uh, At the same time, they were all encouraging harassment towards Jeremy. But there's something important in this situation that is extremely groundbreaking. Something that everyone should probably have looked into before they jumped on the bandwagon. It was all a big fucking lie. I thought that through. This all initially started with Spanko accusing Jeremy of two years of prolonged harassment against her, which is her reason for why she left the community. And a lot of the sensible people in the community did the obvious thing where they said, well, can you provide any evidence of this? Which is a perfectly reasonable thing to ask, but most of the people from the other side responded with, listen and believe. And then after being put under more and more pressure to come forward with some actual fucking evidence, they eventually did... Kind of. Most of it was dog shit garbage that didn't actually prove any of the original claims, so what I'm going to do is focus on Talarian's video, because out of everyone, Talarian was the one that had the most evidence in his video, and presented it in the most concise manner. First piece of evidence. The latest thing that set me off on Patreon is a female cosplayer in the Magic community crying on her video asking for money. Let's be very clear here. One, if she wasn't a good-looking girl the support would be about 5% of what it really is. And two, if she wasn't also crying, same thing holds true. If I I said it better in a tweet, but basically, if you are an average looking woman or any man, you would not have garnered hundreds of patrons overnight. That's just harsh criticism. It's also fucking true. Serial virtue signaler and crying for Patreon dollars cosplayer. See a sprinkle run posted yesterday. Allow messages to my Facebook page again. Question my life choices immediately. Sprinkle is a pro cosplayer. You know she's a professional cosplayer by the fact that she has to solicit Patreon dollars and then cry in her Patreon video to get loser beta cucks to give her money. But you know what? Fuck these people that think she has any sexual interest in them, just give her her money, give her your money, and don't you dare objectify her. That's just harsh criticism towards the girl's attitude when it comes to doing what she does. Look at, I mean, it is like an all-time white knight gold rush for these losers that think they have any real chance at penetrating this woman. So much burning rage that I recorded a Patreon video crying and begging fucking losers for their money. Oh yeah, you're such a hero. Sprinkle, you're such a hero. This is him kind of calling you out for using your looks and people's emotions to try and get money. Like, I'm, I'm sorry, but I agree with him there. You shouldn't pull on people's heartstrings to try and e-beg unless you absolutely fucking need it. When it came to me doing my fundraiser, I had to get persuaded into it because I really, really didn't want to do it. But then I was presented with the excellent argument of, do you want to look like a little bit of an e-beggar or possibly spend a year in prison? That convinced me. But I don't think it's very unfair to say that if an ugly woman e-begs and a pretty woman e-begs, that we all know who would get more money. And I talked to some people about the cosplay thing. I think cosplay is great. It's, It's great. It's not really a service, in my opinion. It's someone who likes to play dress up. I think a lot of people see this fat material, in my opinion. When I start looking at some of this cosplay, I start having to say, like, I feel a little movement down in my pantaloons. And I'm like, I see why. I see why people could like cosplay. That's, again, a true statement. Cosplay is easily the most sexualized area of nerd culture. The pretty ones get the attention and all the money. Same as those booby streamers on Twitter. But I'm not mad at them for it. If I had a giant rack and a nice ass, I would be doing the exact same thing and robbing all you gullible motherfuckers of your money. Don't hate the player, hate the game. 
But there is a small thing that I do actually really want to point out about what Talarian said. Do you really think that her inbox doesn't fill up with hate? That she doesn't get the same death and rape threats that you are on the receiving end of now? I've already went over this point before when I did a video on that gold digger, Aquila, obviously, but... See, when it comes to death threats and rape threats, Jeremy did not tell people to do that. He has absolutely no power over what his audience will do. Say that you made a video on me, Talarian, and in exchange I ended up getting a bunch of death and rape threats, when that totally wasn't your intention at all, but it still happened because of the video that you made. That wouldn't in any way be your fault. Just the same as it's not Jeremy's fault that that happened to Sprankle, despite what Jeremy thinks of Sprankle, he absolutely disavows any rape or death threats that she gets. He does not want her to be getting those type of threats. Like you said yourself in your video, you're a critic. Jeremy is also a critic, he just does it in a lot edgier way that you don't like. But at the end of the day, neither of you have any control over what your audience will do when you criticise something to them. So it seems that the safest way to actually avoid death and rape threats and all that other type of shit is to just not criticise anything, ever. Which obviously isn't a sensible solution because that would shut down half the channels on YouTube. Are actions such as this ones that are intentionally whipping your followers up into an aggressive frenzy? Yes, everyone who creates content is going to get harsh attacks, but are you adding fuel to the fire by saying that this war is coming, that we should never give in to anyone being upset and they block you and trying to escape, but that will never stop you from going after them. What exactly is the goal with this? From what I can actually see in those tweets, it doesn't look like he's encouraging his followers to harass anyone. It looks like he's more relishing in the fact that he's hated by the community. Talarian, I used to like you, man, but this whole video is starting to seem really, really fake. It seems, to, it seems to me like the way you're presenting yourself just now and the way that you've made this video, you've kind of tried to make it look as if you're coming from an area of good faith when it's kind of obvious that you're just trying your hardest to virtue signal for what you feel is the righteous side. There's a lot of misrepresentation in your video and it's actually starting to feel extremely dishonest. And it is known that you do have a bias because you're friends with this girl. No, we're not using any new artwork for you. Classic Liliana then. I can't blame you. Why mess with perfection? But anyway, moving on. Ugh. So, like I said, I had my beef with him in the past, but it's to the point that people have almost fucking died in the MTG community by being bullied that harshly. Yes, they have literally died from tweets. Of course they have. I mean, look, Everyone who gets mean tweets are just dropping like flies. Look at all the MTG content creators that fell off the face of the planet because somebody said a mean word to them. Again, that's true. I've yet to see anybody hospitalized by a tweet. I was reacting to a crazy statement by a huge member of this community. Loading Ready Runs frontman Graham saying that women can't deal with comments as mean comments because they don't have penises. And that I was supposed to be ashamed I was born with a penis. And I should be thankful that I have this genital to make me stronger against mean comments on the internet. But that isn't what Graham said at all. That is a misrepresentation of that argument that you had with him. And people who didn't see that argument are going to go by that claim from you. Shouldn't you at least be accurate in, in what you say? That may be the case in this instance. I'm not 100% clued up on this exact event, so I'm not going to attack or defend anyone on either side. But see if people in your audience just want to take absolutely everything that you say at face value and then do no further research themselves, well then that's their choice if they want to be fucking stupid. I expect the same thing from everybody that watches me. Don't just believe everything that I say. Research it, and if I'm wrong, tell me that I'm fucking wrong. Before I decided to weigh into this, I watched videos on both sides and looked at the evidence on both sides before I reached any kind of conclusion and I would advise anyone to do the exact same thing in every scenario. I'm not going to be held responsible if you want to be stupid. Publicly shaming these people and posting their names on the internet is 
you know, something that's totally fine. But don't you feel that behavior such as taking a photo of just a random person, a woman at a GP, and then sending it out to all of those followers with an arrow pointing at her, mocking her, saying you don't like that she's there, she's obviously there with her boyfriend or just a bystander, to this person you don't even know who she is? To be honest, at magic events, that actually is really fucking annoying. He was just simply showing an example of annoying behaviour at a magic event. He said in the original tweet that started the thread that he loves the ladies of magic. He was just showing an example of some annoying fucking behaviour. And from everything that I've seen so far, I still haven't seen any actual evidence where he is harassing Sprankle or encouraging violence or rape threats or anything like that towards her. I'm just, I'm just simply not seeing two years of harassment here. All I'm really seeing is him being edgy and mocking people while he criticises them and everyone being a bunch of fucking pussies about it. A tweet, not to you or at you, that just says, what is Antifa? I, I don't know what that is. I don't even know what that is. I don't want to know. But she's just asking that question and your response is, she's a terrorist and you literally, to all of your followers, declared her to be such. Do you feel that's a fair thing to send out at another person? Is that criticism or is that an attack? I find it curious that, um, I, you know, I, I don't know what's going on here, but certain, certainly this does read as possibly uh, someone who works for Wizards of the Coast is uh, interested in, at the very minimum, learning more about Antifa. I completely agree with you in this, but just because someone asks about Antifa on Twitter doesn't mean they actually want to join Antifa, so Jeremy did misrepresent that girl there, so I completely agree. I'll give you that one. I'm not familiar with this person. I mean, the red mohawk tells me everything I need to know, but we'll see here. I genuinely don't see anything wrong with that. Well, he, he made an underhanded comment about someone's stupid fucking hairstyle. Everybody does that. That's basic as fuck. I have a stupid fucking hairstyle. And before what hair? This is 100% about virtue signaling. This is all this is. If you want to really get down to the numbers, what does the LGBTQI LMNOP population represent? Less than 1% of Magic players? Virtue signaling is annoying as fuck. He's not being anti-LGBT or anything when he says that. I agree with his statement. Virtue signaling is fucking annoying. We get to immediately. Hate speech! Yes, everybody's favorite catch-all term for words we don't like. I don't really need to tell any of you my opinion on hate speech, do I? I, I know when I walk into game stores, they're literally raping women in there. It's like, I, I mean, I'm used to it now. I just walk by and there's rapes happening everywhere. And like, it's, it's normal, it's normal, right? So hopefully they can stop all the rapes. He's just being sarcastic and calling out all the usual over-exaggerated bullshit that you always see in far left media. Again, I'm still not seeing the harassment here. When you laugh with these hundreds of thousands of followers and retweet things like this that they send you, you're encouraging them to keep doing this sort of thing, to send these types of things my way and Wedge's way. Mocking memes. Really, you are, you are upset by mocking memes. I know it was all meant as a joke, but when someone such as yourself creates a private Facebook group that you then publicly invite your viewers into, and in it you offer rewards for people attending one of Wedge's panels at GP Vegas where they can ask him humiliating questions about his weight. You just thought it was funny and blowing off some steam with friends, but you were sending this out to all of your followers. Again, I find that completely fair. There was no guarantee that even though Jeremy might have just been joking when he posted those posts, that someone wouldn't have actually taken it seriously and then actually walked up to the event and trolled Wedge with questions. Someone could very easily have done that, so yeah, that's fine. I'll grant you that one. But this event seems to be the only thing so far that could possibly come close to harassment, even though harassment's supposed to be a period of several points of unwanted contact, but in this instance it seems to just be a prank that was planned at an event. Which, yeah, might have been a shitty thing, 
but it doesn't actually qualify as harassment. And uh, another thing as well is, even if it did qualify as harassment, it's not in any way aimed at Sprankles, is it? Now, the reason I actually chose this video is because it is the biggest source of all of the apparent evidence against Jeremy, but it seems that there was only a few instances in there that actually related to anything that, you know, they want to call harassment towards Sprankles. It seems that there was a few tiny things at the start of the video, and then the other 85% of it was just going off on a complete tangent about stuff that Jeremy had apparently said about other YouTubers in the magic area. Now the thing that really really puzzles me the most about this right is Talarian's video was very clearly a group project because all of this only happened on Friday and there is absolutely no way that Talarian somehow managed to pour through all of Jeremy's videos on all of his YouTube accounts and pour through all of his tweets on all of his Twitter accounts on his own so he had people helping him sourcing all of the good bits and all the juicy stuff to actually put into the video and despite that huge group effort and gathering all of that evidence together. Still no evidence of two years of harassment against Sprankle. And Talarian, you can act all saddened and meek and oh I hate to do this, but in the video, I see right through your fucking bullshit man. See if you had that many people working with you to gather all that stuff. You yourself would have questioned like, hmm, even though we found all this shit of him being an edgy boy online and pissing people off, there isn't quite enough here to prove Sprankle's original claims, you know, the ones that lit this fucking dumpster fire. You're trying to act like you're coming from an area of good faith here and I'm doing what's best for the community, but you're not. You got a group of people to find all the bad shit on Jeremy and obviously completely ignored everything that would exonerate him because you didn't fucking find anything. You're trying to act like you're being a little bit unbiased and you're doing this for Jeremy's own good. No, you're not. You're shaking his hand while stabbing him in the back with the other. The fake persona in your video isn't fooling me, because we all know you've got a bias. MTG cosplayer and friend of the channel, friend of mine, Christine Sprankle. But despite all of that, the only two things I've seen in all of that evidence that did kind of make me raise an eyebrow and agree with you in some way was the time where he conflated a woman asking about Antifa to wanting to join Antifa and when he was making those Facebook posts that could possibly have resulted in people going up and trolling Wedge at one of the magic events. But even though I agree with you on those things, those things have nothing to do with Sprankles. The only other things that you showed were tweets, where no one was added in the tweet so it wasn't directed at anyone, clips from live streams that were presented just on his own channel, and clips from videos that were just presented on his own channel. So that basically means that even though he created media where he critiqued someone or made fun of them or acted like an edgy boy, this wasn't sent to anyone or directed at anyone. He wasn't communicating these things directly to that person, which would possibly qualify as harassment if it's done a lot over a period of time. He wasn't trying to pressure people into doing anything, he wasn't trying to force them into doing anything, he wasn't trying to force anyone out of the community, he wasn't telling people what to do, he wasn't trying to use aggression to manipulate people or anything like that, which would be a form of harassment. The only thing that I could see him doing was critiquing people and mocking them on his own platform, but not actually communicating these messages directly to the people in question. And about 85% of the stuff that you've shown was pretty much that, and a lot of it had nothing to fucking do with Sprankles. So what I'm basically trying to say is, how the fuck does any of that prove Sprankles' original claim that she was harassed for two years by Jeremy? That still hasn't been proven, and it's the bullshit that started this entire fucking thing. The only thing that I've seen so far is that Jeremy mocks people, critiques people, and acts like an edgy boy while he does it, and you're all butthurt about it. And you just saw a golden opportunity to finally get your own back. It's very well known that Jeremy really is not liked in the community because of the way he acts. He acts a lot like me. I'm not very well liked either. I think pretty much everyone in the Magic the Gathering community on YouTube at some point has ran into Jeremy where he's mocked them or critiqued them or referenced them in a video and they've got really upset about it. And that's what all of this is about because there are two type of people. There are those that get called out on their bullshit, take that criticism on board and use it to develop themselves. And there are people that get called out on their bullshit and instead act like a fucking victim. 
And these people really couldn't deal with Jeremy calling them out on their bullshit. But there was nothing close to harassment. You know, a fat neckbeard can't come out and say, I was harassed because he would just get laughed at. I, st- I still find that quite funny, actually. So what could these people do? What could these people do about this thorn in their side that kept calling them out in their bullshit and kept calling them out in their lies and all the misrepresentation that they did? What what could they do to finally get rid of them? Enter Sprankles. Because who the hell could ever think that you're wrong when you're coming to the aid of a poor, defenceless woman? Even if that woman is fucking lying. She claimed years of harassment. The only evidence that we've seen is a screenshot of a Reddit post, a few references in some of these videos, and a handful of tweets. That is not years of harassment. That proves fucking nothing. But, let, but let's have a look at why Sprankles really did leave the magic scene, because since nobody can actually provide any evidence of this apparent years of harassment, it might have been something else that done it. I, I, I wonder what it could be. Wow, would you look at that? Our Patreon really was dwindling, wasn't it? Oh, no, and look! Look what happened when all the drama kicked off. Isn't isn't that strange? That really is a shame, Spranko, that your Patreon just got all shiny all of a sudden. It really is a shame. Because you said yourself you're actually uh, leaving the Magic the Gathering cosplay community and that's what your Patreon was for, so... I guess you won't be needing it anymore, so you're obviously going to be deleting it, yeah? I heard a few rumours that Sprankle get recently dumped by her boyfriend and that on top of a dwindling Patreon probably had her down in the dumps. But what is it that she could do to remedy this situation? So she came up with a plan. She would be a drama queen and announce her dramatic exit from the Magic the Gathering cosplay community and on her way out of the door would make up a bunch of lies about years of harassment so that she could take a final swing at a guy that she's always hated because he always called her out on her bullshit. And what that caused in return was all of the white knights and cucks of the Magic the Gathering movement all surrounding her and filling her Patreon up with all that money. The THOUGHT MAGIC IS STRONG! Now to all of the white knights that have surrounded this girl, despite the fact that she still has not provided any evidence to actually back up these claims, there is some information that you should be aware of. I've actually read every single piece of literature that's actually been created in the entire history of mankind. I've browsed all of Wikipedia and everything onto the internet. I've even went all the way back and read the Dead Sea Scrolls, ancient stone carvings and tablets, and even this ancient manuscript itself. And I'm afraid to tell you that at no point ever in the entirety of human history has a woman slept with a man because he defended her on the internet? Sorry guys, but don't worry White Knights. Now that our Patreon's nice and shiny again, don't be surprised if in the next few weeks Sprankle announces her triumphant return to the Magic the Gathering cosplay universe. Now that it's worth her while. You gullible fuckers. I don't, I don't really get the whole cosplay thing myself. A lot of girls just cosplay for fun, but the pretty ones always expect to get paid for it. Like, you didn't exactly earn being pretty, did you? You're just, you're just kind of born that way. I don't understand the whole mentality of, I won the genetic lottery. Money please! But anyway, the thing that has actually been most fantastic about this is how hypocritical the Magic the Gathering community have actually become in the wake of this. They all already hated Jeremy, so they just really wanted a reason to kick him out of Magic the Gathering in its entirety, and Spranko's lies were an amazing way for them to do this. One thing that they probably should have done is actually looked into her fucking claim first to realise that she doesn't actually have any fucking evidence before they back the wrong fucking horse, but they've all realised that they're in too fucking deep now. So instead of just acknowledging, hey, we fucked up, they're instead doubling down. And take to Twitter, guys, because I'm having so much fun. Jeremy does criticise people and make fun of them. A lot of people on YouTube do it. I do it. But one thing that me or him have never done is to try and control what people can and can't do or prevent people from doing anything. But the thing that's just... The thing that is just... about this entire situation is that all of the people in the Magic the Gathering community that are screaming harassment and surrounding Sprankle because, you know, if you protect the cosplayer, she'll touch her penis. And screaming harassment, harassment, harassment. They are now all encouraging each other and other people 
to harass Jeremy by spamming him on Twitter, flagging and reporting his tweets, flagging and reporting his YouTube videos, trying to get his Facebook taken down, trying to get his Patreon taken down, not realising that they themselves have now become the fucking harassers. There is that is that whole saying where these are the type of people that will punch you in the face while screaming in agony themselves. It's fucking beautiful. His ability to post and incite hatred, his ability to abuse anyone and everyone needs to be stopped. Subscribers need to leave his channel, stores need to blacklist him, hateful videos need to be removed, accounts need to be banned. I personally hope that their lawyers do a deep dive into his content, finding any straws they can grasp for slander or libel or Definite defamation of character, find some unfair copyrighted material usage, just pummel this guy with legal fees. If YouTube can't or won't stop him from making hateful YouTube videos, then make him financially incapable of producing YouTube videos. If you're following him because you found him early on and you haven't unsubscribed yet, then unsubscribe from him now. If you subscribed at some point to, to win some booster packs or any of his BS buying subscriber co uh, contests that he does, then unsubscribe now. If you have friends that this describes, spread the word for them to unsub. Report every piece of agreement-breaking bullshit he posts, be it on Twitter, YouTube, wherever. One of the main places that is actively trying to encourage hate against Jeremy is the Magic the Gathering subreddit and also its moderators. Basically, any and all posts that defend Sprankles or are encouraging hatred towards Jeremy all get left up. But any and all posts that try to defend Jeremy or actually ask for any evidence immediately get deleted and the user gets banned permanently. I actually got permanently banned for posting a comment saying that there was absolutely no evidence to support Sprankle's claims of years of harassment and I was instantly permanently banned. I replied back to the mods and says that it would probably be in their best interest to remove any and all posts relating to this incident, no matter what the post's about. It could be a post that hates or loves Sprankles or a post that hates or loves Jeremy. Just delete absolutely everything, go full scorched earth and just completely drop this hot potato. And the reply, <laughs> the reply that I got from them was fucking spectacular. Again, if you see a post which violates our rules, please use the report button to let us know. We do not appreciate your threats and we will report them to the admins of Reddit if they continue. Threats. Congratulations, Mr. Anonymous Mod. You are officially the biggest pussy I have ever come across in my entire life. And I've seen Big Red's nudes. You also have to laugh at some of the absolute dog shit that the mods are posting, trying to say that this is in everyone's best interest and we're trying to remain unbiased while failing spectacularly at doing that. Some of the justifications that the mods were using for a ban was if he simply stated that not all magic players are like this. Hashtag not all. The ban hammer is locked and loaded, that's fucking gay mate. The reddit mods banned people en masse but allowed posts and comments encouraging hatred towards Jeremy to remain on the subreddit. So the Magic the Gathering subreddit is actively encouraging and is complicit and the hate campaign that's against Jeremy right now. And the thing that just makes this entire shit show so beautiful is it's based on a fucking lie! <laughs> Fuck you, bitch. Reddit mods very often get used as case studies for people that have god complexes, but have you ever seen a Reddit mod in real life? They look like little fucking gimps. See if I ever actually physically meet a Reddit mod in real life. I'll fuck his wife in front of him. Ban this, cuck. So even despite all of this evidence that's been presented so far, the only things that I can actually really fault Jeremy on is the time where he called that woman out for wanting to join Antifa when she clearly didn't, she just wanted information, and also the time where he tried to arrange for people to go up to Wedge at that event and answer, ask him stupid questions through the microphone. That had potential to go wrong, so I'll grant you that. He shouldn't have done that, but those are... Really the only things that I can actually fault Jeremy on. And they're not harassment. It's just, it's just, just not harassment. Whereas all of the people that have sided with Sprankle in the Wizards community are actively encouraging a hate campaign against Jeremy. They're trying to get his YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, absolutely every area of his social media and livelihood taken down. All based on a fucking lie because this girl still cannot provide any evidence of two years worth of harassment. It seems that the main thing that he does that all of you have a problem with 
as he calls you out on your bullshit and he makes fun of you while doing so. And you can't handle it. You can't handle some mean words. Whereas all of the people that have sided with Spranko are encouraging a hate campaign against Jeremy. The entire fucking subreddit is doing a hate campaign against Jeremy. Everyone is instructing each other to flag his YouTube, flag his Patreon, flag his Facebook and get all of those taken down. And they're even producing guides on how to do this, specifically for Jeremy. They are trying to petition Wizard to actually get him banned from all Wizards of the Coast events. and. On top of all that, they're also trying to petition to get people banned from Magic the Gathering events just based on their opinion. Who's the bad guy here? All you betas need to start thinking with your head and not your dick. Come to me if you want to learn how to resist thought magic. It's Count Dankula on YouTube. Everybody should subscribe.